In this alternate universe, Harry Potter is behind GTA. This is the true story of how GTA was almost destroyed forever. The year is 2002 and GTA Vice City has just released. We catch the president of Rockstar Games, Sam, watching the news before. Wait a minute. Anyway, he bikes to work as we listen in on a radio broadcast about the game's release. A rather fervent fan is singing the game's praises. It's just so big and really fun to play with. I'm uh, gonna let you get back to playing with yourself. Uh. How wholesome. Enjoy the game, sir. At the office, Sam learns that Vice City has sold an astounding 1 million copies in its first day. Though this is a time for celebration, Sam sets his mind straight to the next release. He rounds up his crew and brainstorms about their next game. He wants it to be gritty, in the hood, full of life and color, and covering the very real gang violence of LA at the time. Sam, we're Brits, it's not our place to cover a real issue, but that's exactly why we should cover it. As outsiders, we have a clearer picture about America. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Then we meet Jack Thompson, the obnoxious, morally righteous antagonist of today's story. At home, he blesses his family's meal with good vibes and prayers. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this bountiful meal on this blessed day in which we are eating good. Amen. And a women, equality. We cut to a scene of a teen playing Vice City before cutting back to the boys brainstorming about San Andreas. Dan, Sam's brother, offers up a brilliant suggestion. If you really want to shake things up, why not add a black main character? You're right. Yeah, let's take it black. Respect. Back to Mr. Lawyer Man, we catch him taking a call while shooting some golf. Some lady wants him to handle her case, but he declines stating that he's not the right man for the job. You see, I'm kind of a toxic lawyer these days. I got Howard Stern kicked off the air for his depravity. Thank you for the exposition, Jack. And now, we check back in with that gamer boy. He's more entrenched than ever into the game, totally absorbed into its violent world. Later, the Rockstar crew celebrate Vice City's success. Sam bought Jamie a cool new whip before reminding him that things are only just getting started. San Andreas has to be bigger and better, no matter what. We both know we're only just scratching the surface of what games can do. He's right. I mean, look how far we've come. Really just groundbreaking stuff. Now, onto some law-breaking stuff. The gamer from earlier is caught stealing a car. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Relax. It's a line from the game. At the police station, the boy, Devin Moore, is recorded into the system. As the officer uncuffs him to get his fingerprints, Devin goes straight for the blicky. With the exaggerated swagger of a young- <coughs> Sorry. Devin proceeds to speed through the level like it's on easy mode. Then, he commandeers a police car for style points. Sadly, not long after, it's game over for Devin. The next morning, Jack spots the news on his laptop and immediately reaches out to the Alabama Police Department. Wasting no time at all, Jack meets with the teen. When they arrested you, you said, Life is like a video game. You've got to die sometime. Gamer moment. Anyway, Devin is just like, Who are you? Having failed to connect with the teen, Jack returns home, though he's still as determined and wrong as ever. He's just a sweet, stupid, lost kid. He got arrested and he panicked. You see, he's one of those people that think games are basically evil mind control. You don't know it was the game made him act that way. But it was the game. No, no, it wasn't. Nonetheless, he remains steadfast that these games are at least partially responsible. They're drenching our children in depravity and violence. Okay, this part isn't wrong, but it's not games. Back to the boys, they continue with another brainstorming sesh in the office. Sam wants the player to be able to customize Carl, the main character, any which way they like, just for fun. Hmm, well, if it's not tied to anything, why would people do it? Well, for example, Terry, through Carl, you could have any hairstyle you like. Paul. And Dan, you could finally get a girl. This spurs a light bulb moment in Sam's brain. Actually, yeah, if you make Carl attractive enough, he should be able to get a girl. Fired up, Sam declares that, Guys, we're gonna create the first truly adaptable hero. Little did he know at the time, this idea of his would be their downfall. Until then, it's time to do some research for their new game. The boys head to LA, donning some impeccable drip. They roam the streets recording the real deal, before running into the real deal. A gangster and his goons pull up and antagonize the Brits. You smelling real good, homie. Be cool, these are English. Do guys. not tell me to be cool, Fellow African American. Things get heated, but then their tour guide drops the fact that they're doing research on a game, Grand Theft Auto. I'll make GTA. I'll some rock stars. Literally, yes. The mood quickly lightens up. Man, I play that game for hours. And just like that, they're all buddies. Later, Sam enjoys some ping pong with the bros while reiterating that the game should really include hiding the pickle. Seeing as it's an integral part of life and other forms of media have covered it, why can't they? Immediately after his dominant match of ping pong, Sam gets to typing up a saucy email demanding the additions to the game. Meanwhile, Jack meets up with the families of Devin's victims. 
He explains his position, that this was all the fault of a mere video game, but quickly meets some resistance. I want that boy to face up what he did. Jack assures him that this is merely a civil case, and that Devin will still face criminal charges for what he did. But of course, if this works out, the families would be getting compensated. Oh, okay. Jack continues with some more sanctimonious BS before we cut to him presenting his case to reporters. He watches on proudly in his living room. Sir, how much are you seeking in damages? 600 million for the families. Isn't that excessive? I don't think so. Based. It's not long before the Rockstar team catches wind of things. Terry informs Sam, and then we cut right back to Jack, who is enjoying the beloved GTA video game. This can't be. Suddenly, his wife unexpectedly arrives home. Honey, it's not what it looks like. I'm doing research. It's unbelievable. See, Jack, it ain't so bad. In all seriousness, he wishes ill upon those who created such depravity. At night, Sam looks into Jack and learns that he indeed has a rather large stick up his bum. Jack calls himself a crusader against obscenity, which brings tears to Sam's innocent blue eyes. At the same time, Jack does the same, researching Sam and peering into the endless depth of his neckbeard. Who are you? Continuing on his righteous mission, Jack meets with a neuroscientist studying the effects of disturbing images on the mind. Now brace yourselves. These images may shock you. Terrifying stuff. Apparently, viewing these images triggers the same part of the brain that processes stress and trauma. The science man agrees to testify in court regarding these findings. Then, Jack heads to a military training facility where we catch a glimpse of combat simulators, which are kind of just games that are used to train soldiers. The officer sees eye to eye with Jack about the grave social danger of video games. So, he agrees to testify as well. Everything is in my book. I'm willing to say in court. Hardly able to contain his excitement, Jack asks for an autograph. As the officer scribbles away, Jack can't help but look to him with a lustful gaze. Later, on the way to the office, Sam once again stresses how important it is for them to have an incredibly crafted secret tickle time sequence in their game. But it's really important for the vibe of the game. Sure. Then, we cut to a wholesome montage of developers toiling away at the intricate code necessary to produce such a beautiful, classy scene. Meanwhile, Jack is heading out of church when this lady commends him for his anti-gaming efforts, spurring him to... Well, I certainly intend to. Okay. The lady promises to send him good vibes and prayers, and... And I'll send them some hate mail. Lovely. At the office, Sam and the boys watch as Jack appears on 60 Minutes, discussing the impending GTA case. Devin Moore, in effect, was trained to do what he did. Like okay. Jack. Whack. Correct. As the beta of the group, Jamie suggests maybe they should tone things down for the game. Absolutely not. It's a free country. I will not compromise the artistic vision of the game. Sam storms into his office, then we come back to Jack. He's got a bunch more TV appearances lined up. Suddenly. Mm -hmm. Hello? Skin tone, chicken bone, leave me alone, Hedda. God damn. She shook. Jack assures his wife that everything is fine. Yes, I know. We can't let things like this stop us, honey. I agree, Jack. She is so tired of his shit. At the office, Sam summons his inner Jeff Bezos and pushes Jamie to work even harder. However, this is as hard as Jamie gets. Come on, mate. Out of nowhere, Sam pops Jamie with a lightning fast double jab to which Jamie viciously counters. The situation quickly escalates and then... I'm just having a giggle, mate. We cut to Jack's son who's being ostracized by his peers Oh look, it's Game Boy. In the lockers, he finds that all his gear has been trashed. Later at home. Hi honey, good game. Who calls their son honey? Anyway, Jack picks up on his son's somber mood. Upon confronting him, he reveals that he's being bullied. Jack is torn up about this and knows just how to fix it. I'll go to the school. I'll talk to the kids. Jack, no. Moving on, Sam is cornered in his office regarding the sussy scene he wants in the game. If it stays, the game is sure to get an adults-only rating, which would prohibit it from being in stores. Despite this, Sam does not back down easily. What's wrong with this country? I can walk down the road and get an Uzi if I want. And heaven forbid anyone sees a woman's... Whoa, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. You are speaking too much truth. Sadly, Sam eventually gives into the capitalist way, accepting that his scene will need to be removed. Back to Jack. Love the way that sounds. We learned from his wife that Take Two, the publisher for GTA, has let loose their juggernaut of a legal team, Blank Rome. Good, but I want this fight. She assures him that in fact, he does not want this smoke, stating that they'll dig up everything they can to paint him as a fanatic, a point that is then mirrored by Dan when Sam expresses worry about the situation. From what I've heard, Jack is his own worst enemy. He's a big mouth. Which we see on full display when Jack angrily types an email to Blank Rome. Your client and what it does is indefensible. You disgrace us. Shame on you. You okay? You in battle, honey. What an absolute knobhead. He then proceeds to angrily play some golf, before writing another email, this time to Take-Two CEO. 
Hiring blank Rome was the dumbest move you could have made. Are you sure about that? The next day, Jack quickly learns that that isn't the case when an army of dripped out lawyers pull up looking like agents out of the Matrix. Suddenly, Jack's assistant drags him over to the bathroom. This is 800 pages detailing your shenanigans and public appearances despite this case being active. The words only bolster Jack's pride, despite his actions being a violation. Jack, did you write a letter to the CEO saying you're going to bankrupt him? Yes. yes, I did, and I don't regret it. Based. Okay, and what about when you told the news that GTA was... Effectively Pearl Harbor 2? Damn, even Jack is like, yeah, maybe, maybe I did go too far on that one. Before the trial can begin, the judge wrangles them both in and announces that Jack's behavior will not be tolerated. He is swiftly dispelled from the case. <sighs> the next day, the trial begins. Though Jack can no longer participate, he remains confident. He sends a wink over to his mans, and then, well, the case is promptly dismissed. Given that the experts never met with Devin Moore, the judge determines that their evidence cannot be considered. That's outrageous. The judge counters Jack's outburst by making a very meanie pants face. Afterwards, Jack charges towards the blank Rome posse, damning them for their evil ways. Okay, well, you should be aware that we put in a request for the Florida Bar to investigate your conduct. ruh -roh. Immediately after, Dan calls up Sam and shares the delightful news. Now, there's more important matters to tend to. Finish the game. We commence with another cool programming montage. And just like that, the game is done. Terry hands it in for rating. Then, it launches to critical and commercial success. This game is great, buy it. Pa! The sales come in, and they're stellar. Sam is ecstatic, so much so that he announces an office-wide ping-pong tournament. Meanwhile, a defeated Jack is on the golf course seeking God's guidance. Please, give me a sign. Hey, asshole, move. Despite having just slain their foe, a new one is about to emerge. This hacker guy in Holland buys the game, no life it, then starts digging through the code. He ends up finding the secret sussy scene and exposes it online. The next day, the gang finds out and all hell breaks loose. The ratings committee is in shambles and the hacker is being hounded by the media. With no one willing to act, Terry takes a stand and tells the public that this was a completely fabricated mod to the game. Of course, that wasn't true. Sam catches wind and berates him for his foolish maneuver. Sam later clears things up with Blank Rome while they grill him in preparation for the eventual fraud case he'll likely have to undergo. Meanwhile, Jack is thrilled. And he just got a call from Hillary Clinton, who wants to meet with him. Poggers. Jack pulls up and... Man, Netflix needs to fix their casting. Just kidding, this is just her assistant. They want all the research he's compiled linking gaming to violence. A little bit later, the rating committee determines that GTA San Andreas had undisclosed scenes which undermined the integrity of its rating. As a result, every disc of GTA will have to be pulled from the stores. And that's just the start. While Sam is sulking at the office, he's informed that the House of Representatives wants to investigate him for fraud. Misleading the ratings board. And then, well, a whole bunch of nothing happens until we finally get to the trial. While Sam undergoes questioning for the game, Jack undergoes his own line of fire for his misconduct. Rockstar Games ends up coming out with a mere slap on the wrist. All they need to do is patch their game, and they're good to go. Jack, on the other hand, gets this barred. At home, him and his wife watch Hillary discuss a bill that, if passed, would ban explicit games to minors. You are winning. What am I winning? I've been permanently disbarred. Yep. Shout out to his wife for supporting his male power fantasy, though. Game on, gamers. Hello, please make a subscription, please. Very much appreciation.